My name is Elaine Kleinman. I moved to Boca Raton in 1971. So, welcome, Elaine Thank Kleinman. You. I'm Barry Brett, a volunteer interviewer with the Boca Raton Historical Society. Today is Friday, June 17th, 2016, and this interview is for the Jewish Oral History Project. We're taping this interview at the television studios at Lynn University in Boca Raton, Florida. Okay, Elaine, so this is a Jewish oral history project, and we'll start with learning about your involvement with the Jewish community since your move to Boca Raton. What, what brought you to Boca Raton? My husband had an opportunity to come down, and he was employed by ITT in West Palm Beach. I was finishing my master's degree in New Jersey, and I was able to complete my master's degree at Florida Atlantic University. They permitted me to do an internship at Henderson School, which worked out very beautifully in our plans. And we came to Boca Raton because this was one of the two areas that we were noted had the best school system and we have came down here with three children who were going to be in the elementary, middle, and eventually high school age group. And so we selected Boca Raton because of the excellent schools and the community. And so where, where were you from originally and what year did you arrive? We were originally from Long Island, went to college in Boston, and then lived in New Jersey, where we were residing before we moved here to Boca Raton. Okay, and what year was that? We came to Boca Raton in 1971, which is approximately 45 years ago. So what can you tell us about the Jewish community when you arrived in 1971? There was a very minimal Jewish community. The only organization was the Boca Raton Hebrew Congregation, and we joined that. Our oldest son, Stephen, was about to be bar mitzvahed and had begun his training in New Jersey. We joined the Boca Raton Hebrew Congregation, which did not have a rabbi at the time, but fortunately, me, my husband, Hank, was able to continue Steve's education, and Stephen was bar mitzvahed at the um, Boca Raton congregation, which met in the Moravian church. He was bar mitzvahed the week before Christmas. So we, had, we got permission to take the twinkling Christmas tree lights off during the bar mitzvah. Oh, that's great. What was it like being some of the first families, first Jewish families in Boca Raton? It really was very challenging because we wanted our children to have a Jewish heritage and a Jewish background, and there really was very minimal programs here. The Boca Raton Hebrew Congregation, which eventually came, became Bethel Synagogue, Bethel Temple, um, met during the week at the Moravian Church and had classes for the children, which our children attended, and then eventually the the uh, te temple moved to the current location, and there then became Sunday school classes. But our home life was important, and the contacts that the children made with their schoolmates and then the children from the, from the temple were very important in their upbringing. So what was it like for your children then? I think you mentioned that your son had some kind of problem with the bar mitzvah, was there anti-Semitism or? No, or no, the problem that he had was an attack at Boca High School, which was several years later. The bar mitzvah went beautifully. The bar mitzvah was held in the Moravian church, the ceremony, and then the party aspect of it was held at our house. There was no caterers here. The closest caterers were in Hollywood, but that worked out fine and we had the party at the house, and it was lovely because now we were in a warm climate in December. 
Well, were there challenges being Jewish for you and your children? The challenges were trying to make sure that they had a background in the history of Judaism, and there were very minimal classes for that to be present, so that what they did get had to come from either the home or the classes. The Sunday school classes, as they began several years later, were very instrumental in their development. So you said that after the bar mitzvah in, in high school, your son was involved in some kind of riot. What, what, what was the uh, issue well, there? Well, the problem was that this was the beginning of integration of the schools in Florida. And they were under mandatory integration. And the Delray High School, Atlantic High School, was a great deal of the students were coming to Boca Raton High School. Neither of the schools were very excited about the integration move, but they were making it. Steve was very involved with the chemistry teacher and had gone to school early in the day to help with a science program, got there early as the bus arrived from Del Rey, some not conventional mottos were written on the side of the school as Steve got off his bike and he was attacked and his eye was severely injured and we got a call. I was heading to Boca Middle School because I was a counselor at Boca Middle School and we were told that Steve had been injured and was in Boca Raton Hospital. Fortunately, he did heal well, but that was the problem at the high school for a number of years. Did that, how did that affect him, that incident? Steve started a club that was an interracial club. Our children were very involved in the community, and the incident actually motivated them to become very much involved in interrelational affairs and interreligious affairs from the, from the school and the community which to this current day they are very involved in. Excellent. Now I think you mentioned that his bar mitzvah, I want to go back to that because I think you mentioned it was the first bar mitzvah in it Boca Raton. It was the first bar mitzvah. What was that Boca like? Well, as I said, there was no rabbi initially and fortunately Hank has a very good background in Judaism and Jewish history and religion, and Hank was able to coach him and to help him with his bar mitzvah instructions. A rabbi was hired in the fall of 71 for the high holidays, but at that point Steve's instruction had been fairly well taken up by my husband and by his previous education in New Jersey. So the bar mitzvah religious-wise went over beautifully. And so he kind of set the standard for bar mitzvahs in Boca Raton. And it was, a, it became a, really a delightful episode because in that there had been none. When it came time for the socializing, we had to rent facilities for Miami and being the week of Christmas vacation, it was a little bit difficult, but the trucks arrived and I just said to all of our guests, pick a friend that you don't know and help the trucks empty the supplies and the food and get to know the person that you're with. So we set it up with the, with the facilities as best we could, given what the situation was. Very different than the present time. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about your involvement with Judaism then and how it is today. So what was your involvement with the Jewish community in the 70s, 80s, and what about today? How has that changed? There, is, there are many, many more facilities today. At the time that we came here, we were the 40th family in the Boca Raton Hebrew congregation. According to the rabbi that I spoke with yesterday, there are 135,000 Jewish households in the South Palm Beach County area. I don't know how that interprets for Boca itself, but there's a very large number of families. There are the Jewish Federation, 
there's the JCC. There are many schools here available to the children on all age levels from pre-kindergarten through high school, through high school graduation. And so the community has very much grown and reached out for the needs of the members. At that time in 1971, we had to make our own community and our own facilities. So your, your son's bar mitzvah was 1971? It was December 1971. Okay, so what is it like being involved with the Jewish community for you today? What is your involvement? We belong to a group called Friday Night Live at the Boca Raton Synagogue, and it is a very warm, welcoming group of people who meet with a delightful, energetic rabbi, Rabbi Josh Brody, and it is a group that is very unified in being together at different concepts, but the motto is unity together under diversification. So that we realize there are many methods and many um, areas of Judaism, but we're together very much in being one group worshiping as each chooses to worship within Judaism. That's really interesting because what you were saying back in 1971 with your son, 72, 73, how he started this group for unity and diversity. So do you see a change basically in the Jewish community from then to now? Well, there, there has to be a change because there only was a very small group and it became the Reform Synagogue. But now there are Reform Synagogues, Conservative Synagogues, Modern Orthodox Synagogues, um, Chabad Synagogues, Reconstructionist Synagogues, and other groups that meet. So that there are many, many diverse ways of observing Judaism. But the motto, as I said, is unity, not uniformity. I like that. And the fact that there are so many students which study together on a, a vast campus. There is the Jewish Federation campus on Glades Road and 95th Street, which has many different schools of all. They have reform students attending there two modern Orthodox students attending there, and the schools encompass teaching at every level, which makes Boca Raton a centerpiece for, really for the world, on how they've integrated so many different levels of Judaism. Huh. That is so interesting. When you were at the Moravian Church? All 40 of us. All 40 of you. What, what, where was that located, the Moravian Church? It was on the corner of Palmetto Park Road and Southwest 12th Avenue. It's still there. The building is still there. I think it may be the science of, I, I forget their exact term. It has been many different organizations, but that small building is still on that corner. So you basically were practicing diversity then too, right? Having a Jewish community in a church. Yes. And that was, that was really the only facility available at the time. But it did, it, it brought together primarily the families with children initially, because there was a great need. Several bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs followed in quick succession because that was what the young families wanted for their children. Oh, very interesting. So. As you look back from 1971 to today, we're now in the year 2016. Is there a way to summarize the, the, your growth as a Jewish person or the community of Boca's growth as a Jewish community? What stands out to you the most? What stands out is the welcoming aspect that Boca has for Jewish families coming in young Jewish families with very young children have facilities here. Um, teenage fam families with teenagers 
have facilities here on all levels. And the children then are able to go to schools which are able to foster the learning that the parents and the children want to achieve, where we had a dig to find the education for our children. It really was a matter of being pioneers and, and finding a way to do it. Because you were the first and there were so few families, did you experience any anti-Semitism or? No, I did not. Good. And I became very involved in the community. Um, I was a counselor at the schools. I was a counselor at Boca Middle School and then became a counselor after Steve was injured I was challenged to go over to Boca High School and to bring integration into the high school. And so that was a big primary aspect. So I was a counselor originally at the elementary and then middle and then high school level. So I became very involved in the community itself, bringing the community together as our children did. So this is a perfect segue to get to the community and to get to the park. Okay. and to get to the carousel. So can you, now it's time for your life as park commissioner, which is a wonderful title. What was your title and what years did you serve and what does it mean to be a park commissioner? Well, after being a counselor, I, we suddenly had, or we had three children approaching college together. So I decided that my background in economics and finance and counseling was a perfect segue into real estate. So I became a real estate broker agent and it worked out really very nicely because that gave me the time to decide on activities in between showing property. The governor in 1980, I believe, it was the year of the woman and the governor called into Boca and received my name from several sources and asked if I would fill in for one year as a commissioner on the Greater Boca Tone Beach and Park District. I was very happy to accept that. And at the end of the year, I said to the other commissioners, I'm not leaving. I'm going to run for that seat. And I was told that a woman in Boca had never had that opportunity, had never won. I said, well, I'm going to run for the seat. And if I don't win, I'll run again. So I ran against an attorney. I beat him two to one. And in the next 30 years, never had an opponent again. 30 years. What does a park commissioner do? The Greater Boca Town Beach and Park District um, oversees the finances and oversees the, the operation of the specific parks that they operate in Boca, which is Patch Reef Park, Sugar Sand Park, Red Reef Park, the Red Reef Golf Course, and now the ball fields, the Countess de Hornley ball fields. So they work out the theory of what the program should be, and they finance it um, and help with the operation, direct the operation. I, as a commissioner, was responsible as the chairwoman several times. I was responsible as the treasurer several times, and then as a member. In 30 years, it gave me a chance to have many different aspects. What I did primarily do, though, our children live all over the world. They live in Chicago, in San Francisco. They lived in England, and now they live in Israel. So we got to see parks and museums worldwide. I came back as a result with ideas that I thought would make Boca very much a part of the world. And so I suggested that we buy the land that is now Sugar Sand Park, went up to Tallahassee, met with the governor and his board, and we were able to work out a plan with the governor. And since the state really oversees FAU, we were able to work out a plan with FAU and with Palm Beach County and with the city of Boca to operate the park system at FAU and to inter, inter work the community, to benefit the community. About what year was that? That's about 20 years ago, maybe 19, the late 80s, I would think. Okay, so now, how on earth did you come up with an idea for what is now 
a centerpiece of the community and parks, the carousel. So how did that idea begin? Because now it's a destination for parents and grandparents and tourists. And well, what I'm very proud of is the theater, which because I have great interest in theater, we were able to put the Willow Theater in, and the, and the other commissioners said to me, parks are for ball fields. And I said, we haven't played football recently, but if you give me a theater, I will play Juliet, and all of you can be my Romeo. They said, give her the theater. Then we came back with the idea of the Children's Science Museum, which we had seen in San Francisco and Chicago and Israel, and was a new concept for Boca. And they said, a Children's Science Museum, what is that like? And it's, I said, it just so happens that I have brochures from all different places, which I will be glad to share with you. And so we got the Children's Science Museum in operation. But the carousel was very special. Again, we had seen them worldwide all over. But we were on Key Biscayne many years ago, and they were saving a very old carousel that had been down in Miami on the Keys. And they were putting it together, and they were going to show this antique carousel to the Miami area. I felt that wouldn't this be a wonderful thing to have a carousel in Boca? So for many years, I presented this to the commissioners. It took me about 10 years to finally get the concept going, and the wonderful spark that, that really brought it to fruition was the fact that the 100th anniversary of Rotary International came into the picture. And I was speaking at several luncheons for Rotary, and they said they were looking for a project which would unify Rotary to present to all the worldwide Rotary clubs. And I said to them, how would you like to build a carousel in Boca and they said, oh, that's a wonderful idea. So it, the Rotary took it up. I believe at that time there were five Rotaries in Boca. They took it up. They decided that that would be something very much that they were interested in. And they helped the Boca Tone Beach and Park District finance the carousel. I was able, wonderful opportunity to help design the carousel and the carousel earrings, which I was given as a birthday present by my husband, design what the carousel would look like. And we put the carousel in, and Boca now has something that I call an intergenerational facility, something that parents, grandparents, children all can use together. And my original concept also included a ramp that I wanted, which I had seen in Israel, that they were using handicapped areas for children who, who used wheelchairs and who had needs like that. And we did put um, facilities in, in the benches so that you could strap a wheelchair into the merry-go-round, the carousel, and the carousel came to be. And it, you certainly are the right person for the right time, it sounds like. I mean, it's an amazing undertaking. Do you want to just show us that little carousel? Well, at the point where I decided that 30 years as an elected official was really enough time as an incumbent, and there were other many other things that I wished to do, I decided not to run again after 30 years. And my going away present was this absolutely gorgeous carousel, which says Elaine Kleiman, Commissioner, Boca Raton Beach and Park District, 1981 to 2011. And I proudly put this near my front door among the many other carousel objects that I have, including a carousel horse in the living room. You also brought two plaques. What were those two plaques that you brought? Those plaques, as Sugar Sand Park was being built, the, my children, and it's very difficult to pull my family together, because as I said, they really live all over the world. But it was a wonderful occasion that all of the children and the, exist the children, grandchildren at that time um, were in town just before the opening of Sugar Sand Park. And I was able to hire a, a professional photographer to come over with us and take pictures, I believe the day before the, ca the park officially opened, of all of us on various facilities at Sugar Sand Park. 
So this is a question I really don't have to ask because I can see your passion. How do you feel about your contribution to Sugar Sand and to the community of Boca Raton? The community of Boca Raton is truly my family. As I've said over and over, my family is scattered all over the world and we are fortunate and able every few years to bring them in and have them together. But in the meantime, I get great enjoyment from going to the parks, from using the parks, from taking classes at the parks, from using the parks, and for seeing families together. In the, I love to walk into the Science Museum and see children trying all the different facilities. Um, when I did teach school many years ago, science was my particular gem that I loved to teach. So the Science Museum is very exciting to me. The theater, which is a personal interest that Hank and I have, we do a lot of theater going. The theater is wonderful and I'm excited to see. I, I feel Boca Raton has some wonderful people here who are professional um, theater, theater people. And so there's a facility right here in our town for them to utilize their skills. But most of all, I'm very excited. I go and stand at the carousel and watch the children on the carousel and realize that this is something wonderful that the whole community, that I can share with the whole community. You are called the carousel lady. And I love that, I love that. Okay. That's, why, that's why I have the carousel at home, I have the carousel earrings, and my husband shares the joy of, of the carousel. Okay, so we're gonna end now. I just want to know if there's anything else that you'd like to share about the Jewish community from 1971 to now that we did not discuss, anything that comes to your mind? I am just very thrilled to see how the Jewish community fits into the Boca Raton community. And I think that's wonderful for all of us, regardless of the religion that we have, to be very proud of. It's a very important source of Boca Raton. Boca Raton has a very strong Jewish community, a very strong Christian community, and with all of those groups working together, it makes us very special. When we travel to Israel and when we travel to London and we travel to San Francisco and Chicago, Boca Raton is known in all those communities, and people say to us, you know, we've heard of Boca Raton, we're gonna come visit you, and we extend a welcome from our home to those visitors and we have welcomed people from all different countries to to be in our home and that's a perfect place to end thank you elaine kleiman for this interview and for your amazing contribution to boca raton thank you